guys, Stealth here. A few of you have requested that I start doing a Let's Play for Victorio, so let's get into that. I'm going to start up a new game. I'm going to keep everything in the way that it normally is. And my end game, my objective for creating that rocket. The rocket that's going to take me off of this planet. Let's see what kind of map I have here. Got a whole bunch of forest. I got a large field of iron here, another large field of iron. A bunch of copper. Coal would be nice. Seems to be all the way over on the other side of the map. Yeah, here it is. Well, that's actually interesting. We got coal and copper right next to each other. Which means that iron is going to be a sort of import product. Alright. So, first things first. Let's craft a couple of iron axes because I'm going to be using those quite a bit initially. And for now, just keep getting stone. I want to start by getting the production capabilities up and preferably automated. In order to do that, I'm going to need to build a couple more of these things. Burner mining drills. I think my 15 should do it. There, 15 stone. Now, let's take some wood so I can build some wood chests. Those are going to help me by creating, um, let's say, sh more uh, short-term production storages for my facilities. The first thing I want to get operational is my coal production, because that's going to fuel whatever else I'm going to be building. So let's build a burner mining drill right there. Let's take a bit of coal, and right now the thing can start to uh, pretty much fuel itself. Although we're first going to... whoops. I'm going to need to build a small production belt in order to get that thing done. So let's just keep mining some coal. What I'm first going for is a self-sufficient burner mining drill for coal. So if I have that going, I can then start to automate the process. Um, start building a conveyor belt all the way over to the iron up here. And with that, I can then start to bring the iron with a conveyor belt all the way there, if I need to. I may not need to, I think I will later on. And honestly, I want to try and rush for electricity as quickly as possible. Because getting coal all the way over from left to right is tedious. Whereas rushing electricity production will save me a ton of time. It really, really matters, because let's say that I would use burner mining drills here. If I do that, I'm going to have to either keep walking back and forth with a ton of coal every couple of minutes, because my burner mining drills are going to start to run out of coal, or I'm going to have to produce an entire conveyor belt going from the coal section towards the iron section. And by doing so, I'm going to take up a lot of time, a lot of resources, and both of which um, I'm going to try and not use too many of either, basically. Let's see. It's kind of dark here. There's the burner mining drill. Let's take all the coal that he has stowed so far and reinvest that. Take the stone furnace and just jam all of the iron ore in there. Let's take some of that stuff. There you go. Now he's going to start to produce iron. I'm going to need a few more trees down here for wood. Now, on my map, I don't see any aliens yet. They can still spawn around me. They are not that likely to spawn yet because I'm not producing that much pollution yet again. <laughs> Anyway, this is what I'm going to go for, the electric mining drill. In order to set that up, I will first need to get a steam engine going. In order to get that going, I'm going to need to build an offshore water pump, as well as a boiler. Now, the boilers I can build, they are not the problem. These things are the problem. I don't have enough iron yet. I'm almost there, I think. Yeah, I need 20. I currently have 14. And he's almost out of iron ore again. Let's reinvest that. And let's see, first off, a burner mining drill. 
and a wooden chest. Then take about a half of the coal that I have created with that device and yeah now I'm gonna keep shoveling my production from iron ore towards that furnace so that I'm only going to have to walk towards this section of iron ore if I want to get more iron ore produced. Alright, burner mining drill. It doesn't have any fuel. Let's put a chest in front of it. There we go. Now he's producing automatically. These trees are getting in my way. I want to be able to walk in straight lines here. So let's just chop that down. Also giving me some extra fuel should I need it. Now in order to boost production I can build another one. And I still have enough wood to build another chest. I still have plenty of coal in here so again I'm going to extract half. And produce another one of those. Now, moving on. I don't have any... Oh, actually I do have some stone left. Let's increase production there. There, now I can build another boiler. This thing's first though. The iron pump. Or sorry, the offshore pump. And for that I'm also going to need... Um, where is it? Here, copper. Especially copper plating. Which is something I don't yet have. In order to do that, I'm going to either have to mine that myself, which is not a very interesting prospect, or I'm going to have to, again, automate that with a burner mining drill. That's what I'm going to go for. I'm going to need uh, nine plates of iron ore, or uh, iron plating. One more. There we go. Now, you may be thinking, Factorio, then why are you... Every why are you doing everything by hand? Um, good question. Initially, this seems to be, as far as I have seen, and depending on how your starting setup looks, this seems to be the most time-efficient way of doing it for now. Because if I let these things roll, and they have coal, they're just going to keep producing. If I do everything by hand, it's going to take me a lot more time to get this initial production phase done. And now I basically have to keep these things supplied with coal and just take whatever finished products they have. Walk back, get back to my coal production, take some coal, put that in the furnace, at the iron ore, and wait for it to produce steel plates. And then I can use this lake and this setup right in the middle to start producing some uh, electricity. All right, this is gonna be a lot of iron ore which is great because I can really, really use that. I need a lot more, basically. Let's just build another stone furnace. Right there. Uh, take half of that. Now I'm gonna speed up production a little bit. At this one I also have some copper waiting. They still have some coal left, not too much. So let's put that in there. I'm actually going to need um, to wait either for this thing to finish or I'm going to have to build another stone furnace to get my copper ore produced into copper plates. First off, I can now build a steam engine. I cannot yet build one of these because I don't have enough stones. So let's go back and mine some more stone. There's a little bit of co uh, sorry, coal there, not copper or coal, which might be useful for producing electricity. Let's go for 10 stone. There. I'm going to build two boilers. In order for that thing to build, I still need the copper plates. Now the boilers, I'm going to keep with me for now. Hop back over to this section. Oh, he's almost done. Perfect. Alright, now you can start to work on the copper ore. As that's working, I'm going to take a yet another trip over towards the right because I fear that my iron ore burner mining drills are starting to run out of coal. 
And the iron ore is so extremely important in this game. Iron pretty much functions or uh, powers everything. Every advanced thing that you want to build pretty much consumes iron in some sh way, shape, or form. Look at that. That's a nice production capability right there. So, walking back. Now, I can also build the steam engine. So, why not? It's only going to take me some iron plates, but I have plenty of those. Alright, throw in the iron ore, extract the iron plates, take the copper plates, and there's my offshore pump. I'm also going to have to build some pipes. Not too many, but a few will do. Alright, the pump is going to go here. Uh, let's see, what would be a good way to do this? Because at some point I will need to provide those boilers automatically with coal. If I produce a line of coal bo um, burners, no, sorry, boilers here, so say like that, I can produce my steam engine somewhere down there. But I also want to have access to this section, so I'm going to make a pipe to ground, which means basically an underground pipe. They just have some interesting way of putting that there. Now, add a few burners, sorry, boilers. I'll get this right at some point, don't worry. Add some boilers. These boilers are now saying, dude, we don't have any coal. And they are absolutely right about that. Let's see. Yeah, these th things are doing nicely. Take some of the additional stuff. Take some of the coal. Then I'm also going to need to build another few pipe to ground. You're going to get half and you're going to get half. Now at this point, they are not actually doing anything. They are producing uh water at 100 degrees Celsius temperature and you see they're not actually burning anything because the water the hot water that they're producing is not being used which is good that is exactly what I need all right now in order to keep mobility here I'm gonna uh, let's see yeah I might as well do it like this so I can still move between the facilities if I need to Here's the steam engine. Steam engine says, oh, look, I don't have any power attached. So in order to do that, I'm going to make some small electric poles. They do take copper and wood. So let's take some more of the copper. Let's take some, whoa, 70 copper already. This thing's going to get busy. All right. Now, let's start to work on producing one of these, an electric mining drill. They mine um, without using coal, so I don't have to get worried about these things running out of coal, which is currently what's happening with my coal, uh, with my burner mining drill. So, in order to make that not happen, throw some of that stuff in. For this, I'm going to need some more iron plates, and I have plenty here. Whoops, that is not what I wanted to build. Um, go work on that. Now I can build one electric mining drill. The first thing I'm going to outsource to electricity is this thing. I want to make sure that my uh, coal production is operational under any circumstances. You can see that unlike the burner mining drill, which only extract from their own region, their own four tiles that they're at, these have a far larger reach. And look at the bottom right corner. They say that they have 13k resources like that, whereas this one only has 1.6 doesn't mean they produce 13 times faster, it just means less headache. Okay, not get in the way of the thing, there we go. Add a chest. And now let's make sure this thing gets some electricity. I beautifully put that stone furnace exactly in the way of my small electric pole. There's the steam engine. There. Now it's starting to automatically produce. It just does not have any power yet. And that's correct because these things, these boilers, are not yet connected to the steam engine. Here we go. Now the steam engine is starting production. Let's make sure they, both of those boilers actually feed the steam engine. Water is at 54 degrees, 55, 56 going up. And you can see that the electric mining drill now has plenty of power. 
can keep going and it can keep going so long as it has power it's um, for now though still an open loop because these boilers still have to be fed by hand and for now they have quite a nice amount of uh, coal supplied but I want to automate that for now I don't need to do that yet what I want to do first is again automate more of my mining you can see that this thing is already running out of coal let's take that there's another electric miner throw in a chest make sure he has power beautiful okay that's two out of three automated and I mean two out of three resources let's throw in some copper ore there nice amount of copper ore there now let's take all of that coal walk it back to the other side hello steam engine and this is exactly by the way why I use these pipe to ground because otherwise you'd have a large um, surface pipe here which would be harder to cross I'd have to walk around the thing and especially later on if I'm going to start using conveyor belts which is absolutely going to be my next step that is going to be quite a headache there lots and lots of iron ore is awaiting me here oh I can actually build another one nice and let's make sure I have some small electric poles let's just dismantle one of these things 17k reach a little under like that make sure it has power this is by the way also why I started cutting down those trees initially because trees are very useful for making these small electric poles there a few more and now they're in range Ta-da! Automated. Wonderful. Now, having my stone furnace over here, I'm not sure if it's the best option. I would love to have a production facility, let's say somewhere there, right down the lake where I have power and where uh, my coal is going to be fed towards, where my iron is going to be fed towards, and where my copper ore is going to be fed towards. So in order to do that, I'm going to have to set up, let's say, my uh, stone furnaces over there. And that would save me having to walk all the way from one side to the next. So let's demolish one of those. Can I build... No, I don't have enough stone to build another one. I'm going to let that one finish for now. Let's see how these are doing. Bloody hell, they can create stuff faster than I can transport it. 40 copper plates. There we go. You're coming along. And for now, let's just set up store here. This one is going to be working on iron ore. This one's going to be working on copper ore. And in the meanwhile, I'm going to mine some more stone. Get more of the production furnaces going. I gotta say, in a um, little under 19 minutes, I went from, let's say, no automation to at least half automation. And I mean half automation in the sense that I don't have to keep running from one side of the map to the other. I mean, yeah, well, actually for now I do. But I don't have to worry about these things not getting power. And that's already a big win for me. Can I make another one? No, I don't have enough iron plates yet. Okay. Follow the power lines, back towards the stone furnaces, let's make two more. I'm not placing these in any particular order, I just want to make sure that they have, uh, let's say, a sort of division so that I have iron ore on one side, copper ore on the other side. There are copper plates, iron plates. Now, first things first, I want to start automatically feeding in coal to these boilers. This boiler apparently already used all of its fuel. 
I don't think it needs too much at this stage, but you never know. Yeah, it is burning coal pretty quickly. Okay, so we need to start to automate that. Let's start to work on that. I'm going to make transporter belts and as many as I possibly can. Take the coal. Take the iron. And for now I'm going to start after the chest. reason for that is that I don't yet want it to be fed onto the conveyor belt. There, that's not exactly as much as I would like. We need a bit more. So let's take some of the resources that are in there. And just keep producing more belts. These things are produced two for, let's say, the price of one. I mean that if I click this thing once, I'm going to make two transporter belts. Which is very useful. It saves me a lot of time. Let's head up north. Head east. And I run out of transporter belts again. Beautiful. Almost there. I will need to get a inserter set up as well. There, one inserter. Make some more small electric poles. There. Now, um, unfortunately I don't have enough or iron yet for another inserter. One inserter there, it's uh, complaining that it doesn't have any power. It's correct, it doesn't. For now I'm not going to focus too much on copper plates. I have plenty of those for now. There. Alright, give that thing some electricity. Terrible placement, but so be it. Now, it doesn't actually have anything to grab from yet. So let's change that. And there we go. Now we get coal automatically fed being, uh, or being fed onto the conveyor belt. The conveyor belt merely transports it all the way north. These things take as much coal as they need, which is usually not too much. And everything else is going to just heap up on the conveyor belt, which is not ideal. And right now I can start to feed it towards those stone furnaces. So let's head south, leave a bit of production room in case I want to expand my boiler facility there. Which at some point I probably will. Add some... Uh, coal, add some iron ore, take the iron plates. And now what I want to do is run a production line or um, a coal supply line through these furnaces. And by doing so, the furnaces are automatically going to be fed. Whoops, don't mean to produce that. Four of those. You can never have too many inserters, by the way. It's always nice to have a few of those things in store. So one inserter like that. One there. One there. And one there. Now, like this, they don't have any power, so they're not actually drawing any of the coal. Let's fix that. There we go. Now, if and when they need coal, and they currently don't, because they have a very nice supply... They're going to start to take coal from the conveyor belt. This thing doesn't actually have anything to produce. Alright, now we're actually getting somewhere. The next order of business is to add more conveyor belts coming from the iron over there somewhere. Um, it's real dark in here. I need to start to work on lights. Take some of the iron production... That was a bit little, <laughs> or a bit less than I'd expected. Take that stuff and automatically start feeding it into the furnaces. And then we can actually get this thing done. At which point you could also start to call this um, automated. There. Not too bad. There's a lot of iron ore waiting for me there. 
sometimes will run on the conveyor belt, be a bit faster like that. You can see the coal is already pretty much piling up on this conveyor belt. And these things have plenty of coal. They just don't exactly have any kind of supply in the sense of iron ore. So let's fix that. 17 more. I don't think I'm going to make it with 17 or 34 production belts. I'm going to need a few more, unfortunately. That's south there. At west a little bit. Now, I can probably produce steel plates at this stage faster than I can actually build the things that I need, the transport belts. Also make another inserter. And for now, every effort that I do um, is geared towards automating. It doesn't have to look pretty yet. It doesn't have to be fully automated in the sense that every... Oh, really? In the sense that everything is going to be automatically fed from this onto another transporter belt, but I'll work on that a little later. There, give these things their power. And I have one little bit of production or transport belt left. Take all of that. And here we go. Iron ore being fed onto the belt by the electric miner. Then being transported towards the stone furnaces. Stone furnaces, if they need any, they're going to take it off the belt and produce. Um, actually, let's fix this. There, and you're going to work on iron ore. Unfortunately, though, they can only stock up to 100 iron plates, and then they're going to stop. So that's going to be the next order of business, automating that next step. Let's take some of the coal here. I could go for more stone furnaces if I need to. And right now I have plenty of resources to build one, so why not? Again, make a few inserters, make a little bit of additional production line. And expand my electricity a little bit, like... No, not like that. Slightly out of reach there. more. You insert and you insert. And there we go. It's automatically being fed in. And he's now producing iron plates as well. Okay. Now, this is all nice and well, but I want to make sure that these iron plates are then being produced and transported somewhere else. For that, I'm going to need to do research. And when I have... Um, I believe this... No, which one is it? Automation. Here it is. We need to produce 10 Science Pack 1s for that. Science Pack 1s are pretty easy to produce. You just need a few copper plates and some iron plates. That's all. So let's go for 10 of those. And I'm also going to have to build a lab, which again aren't too expensive. Just a bit of iron plates and copper plates. Real easy at this stage. Now you could say that, um, Stealth, look, you're not actually using this. No, I'm not. And the reason for that is that copper plates initially are a sort of secondary resource. You don't really need them that bad yet. So I am aware that I actually do need to get this production belt, for example, or combine these production belts so that copper ore is also going to flow onto this conveyor belt. Conveyor belt takes it down and the inserters can also take the uh, copper. The thing is that the copper has to go on the second or the other part of the transport belt. And to be honest, I still need to figure out how exactly I need to do that. I haven't exactly figured that out. Although maybe if I come in from the north like that, that might do it. That might do it. Anyhow, um, I'm almost done with producing everything I need for the lab. Lab is being produced. I have 10 science pack 1s in my inventory. Let's put the lab somewhere where it has power, tell it to research automation, and then throw in those science pack 1s. Let's see if I can get this to work. Uh, you're going to produce more plating. 
Look at that. Now we have a very nice supply here. Built a lot more transporter belts here. Now i got to say, this is pretty much a, an experiment for me. If I can feed it onto this production belt, I'm not sure which side it's going to enter. Production belt or transport belts have two sides to them. And you can use both. But I really haven't yet figured out how to exactly do that. So let's see if this will work. That one's going to get deleted. Let's see, he's being fed onto the right side of the transporter belt. Which might mean it's going to flow onto the other section of it. Let's see if this works. Here comes the first bit of copper. Yes, that's what I wanted to see. Now, I'm using one transporter belt to feed copper and coal towards my production facility down here. These things won't do anything with the copper simply because they don't need it. And you can see that they still take as much uh, coal as they need to keep the water at temperature to make sure that the steam engine runs. Steam engine produces all the power that I need to fill everything else. There's the uh, first bit of copper coming in. Research is done. Beautiful. Let's start to work on that. I think I'm not producing enough iron ore because you can see these two inverters are actually taking all of the stuff and this one is getting nothing. Now I have a little bit of additional resources for now but I could ramp up my iron ore production a little bit. And these things are currently not taking any of the copper because they are already working on iron ore. Alright, what I built now is a few long-handed inserters. They're going to take what I have in here and not put it from uh, one to the other, like a normal inserter, but they're going to throw it onto a secondary transporter belt. That's what I want to have. Because what I want to do is make another... Uh, preferably a fast inserter, but I don't have those yet. So let's get an inserter. Get a box. Get a long-handed inserter. And unfortunately it's going to be a bit hard to place these things correctly. I'm going to need and find a spot where they can all be powered from. Well, it's not perfect, but it works. These long-headed inserters are now taking the finished products from the stone furnaces and throwing them onto the other conveyor belt there, which is then throwing it into a box. Now, it's going to not do that fast enough. You can see it will start to pile up, meaning that this stone furnace at some point is going to have a problem. It will not be able to output all of the finished products. And for that, I'm going to need to build a fast inserter. In the meanwhile, these things are now producing copper ore for me. And I gotta say, it's looking real nice. Not bad for a first episode of this Let's Play. So, hope you enjoyed. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. I'd be happy to answer anything that you have. Aside from that, if you haven't tried Factorio yet, it's a really nice game. It's not very expensive, but you can sink a ton of hours into it. And the link to it is in the description down below. I've also created a few starter guides in order to help you get going. You can find links to those in the description as well. For now, thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next video.